Hey, in this tutorial, I'll walk through how to create a morphing animation loop in Procreate Dreams. And if you want to follow along, I have linked the working file in the description. Before diving in, let's take a quick look at the breakdown of the animation. In the first part of the animation, we have this morphing exit animation with the text morphing into a blob with a liquid trail that flies in an arc shape to the right before hitting the top of the heart, which then triggers the reveal animation which fills up the heart. And then after a nice hold, we see the heart morph back into the text leading us back to the first part of the animation. To get started, I have already set up a widescreen file with 12 frames per second and a starting duration of around 4 seconds. Feel free to customize your file size to your needs. Also in that file is my two key poses, which are the Happy Valentine's Day text here and the heart here in the third frame. Tip. Drawing your two poses around the same size and shape is going to help make them morph more seamless. As you can see here, my text fits really well within that heart shape. Morphing text into a shape with a motion trail. And to help me figure out the first part of the animation, I'm going to click on a new layer above my animation and sketch an animation guide. I'll start by drawing an arc from the center of my first pose to the top of the heart. Next, I'll draw lines from the bottom and top of the text to the endpoint of the center line, which should give us a tapered shape that starts out on the same size as the text and will eventually slowly shrink down to that one little point. And then I'll return to the timeline and fill duration of the frame and rename it to guide so it'll be present throughout. And to make it easier to see my actual animation, I'll lower the opacity of the guide layer much better now. And now I'll make sure I'm back on the main animation track and will re-enter the flipbook mode. For this first in-between frame, I'm going to redraw all my letters, but I'm going to make them a little offset and shift it to the left. By having the first movement going in the opposite direction, this will create some anticipation as it'll look like the text shifts back before springing forward and becoming the blob. Next, I will click on the plus icon here to create a new empty frame. And this time, I'm going to loosely trace around the original text using the onion skin to see that first frame, and then we'll color drop to fill in. My goal here is to make the text look like it's starting to merge together. Once done, I will add a new frame, and to make it easier to see the previous frame, I'm going to go and reduce the number of previous frames I see using the onion skin settings. I'm also going to hide the heart shape since I won't need to see it for like this portion of the animation. And since I want the animation to appear to speed up as it goes around the arc path, I'll create some temporary tick marks to just help me kind of visualize and plan out the movement. First, I will make a mark around the center of the last position, and then I will put a second mark on the edge of the shape. So to show the blob speeding up, I will make sure the third mark is about double the distance of those first two tick marks. And then I will start making the distance shorter so the animation starts to slow down as it gets closer to the end. So we'll have it speed up as it's going around the curb and then start to slow down. Now that I have an idea of the blob's movement, I'm going to draw the shape sort of like an in-between of the previous shape and a blob. And I'm going to move its position to the right to align to that first tick mark that I originally made. Next, I'll add a new frame and redraw the blob around the space of that second tick mark. As you can see, I'm using my guide to make sure my blob doesn't go outside of the lines. 
I'll also keep the end of the blob just barely overlapping the edge of the onion skin, which you can see as I rotate the screen. And over the area of the onion skin is where I will draw the liquor trail spots that are falling off the blob as it goes. And then in the new frame, I'll repeat the steps by drawing my blob about half the length of the previous one since the blob is starting to slow down. I'll also draw new liquid spots over the previous onion skin. And then I'll redraw the previous spots shifting a tiny bit and as you can see, as I'm redrawing these previous spots, I'm shifting them a tiny bit forward and making them also smaller. Once done, I will use the color drop to fill in all the spots. Next, I'll add a new frame and redraw the main blob moving forward and getting smaller. And since my shape is getting smaller, I'll just draw a couple small drops over the onion skin area. Since it's slowing down, there will be less drops coming off of it. Next, I'll repeat the process of drawing all the previous drops smaller and moving a little bit further along the motion path. And then I will fill them all in with the color drop. And now I'll add a new frame and I'll continue redrawing the drop smaller. And then I'll redraw the main blob and this time I will only draw one drop over the onion skin frame. The decrease of the blob size and the decrease in the amount of drops coming off of it will help show the animation is slowing down. Next, in a new frame, I will start drawing the main blob. And since I'm about at the end of the path, I'm going to turn on that last heart frame so I can see the shape now. So I'll return to the flipbook mode and finish drawing my blob. And then I'll finish redrawing the drops getting smaller. And then in the next frame, I'm going to draw the blob beginning to enter the heart shape. Next, I'll redraw all the drops getting smaller. Once done, I'll add a new frame and I will start by redrawing the drops smaller. And at this point, I'll start having the drops disappear once they get small. And for the blob this time, the blob is fully submerged into the heart. So I'll start by drawing the edge of the top of the heart and then the drips for the bottom. And then I'll fill the shape in. Next, I'll add a new frame and continue to redraw the drops smaller. And as you can see, I have left a couple drops blank to indicate those drops have disappeared. And then for the heart, I will draw out my blob filling up more of the space. I'm going to have the end whip up a little bit to indicate its future movement to that side of the heart. And then after I fill in the shape, I will add a brand new frame and I will first draw the remaining small drops and then I will draw the heart fill further spread out. And I will repeat these steps in the next frame, continuing to finish out drops and expand the heart fill. In the next blank frame, I will just tap to create tiny dots for the remaining droplets, since this will be the last frame that we will see them. And to show the reveal of the heart speeding up, I'm going to draw the shape a lot further down. So the gap between this shape and the previous shape is going to be bigger than all the previous ones. And now since my heart is almost complete, I'm going to just double that last keyframe and then erase the empty space. So I'll lower the opacity of the layer and with the eraser selected, I will erase a little space at the bottom of my heart. And I'm going to duplicate the heart a second time, and this time I will just erase the tip of the heart. Now that the first part of the animation is done, let's review playback. So I'm going to return to the timeline, and I will make sure the guide track is off. 
and then I will play back my animation. I like to review the animation after completing a portion of it so I can see if there's any elements I want to adjust before moving on. For the second part of the animation, I'll be morphing the heart shape back into the text. And for this morphing sequence, I want it to be different to create some interest in the full animation. So I will have the heart morph directly into the text instead of using a motion trail. To help me make sure my animation loops seamlessly, I'm going to copy the first frame and paste it at the end of the animation. I'm also going to extend the final heart frame as I want to hold for several frames so viewers can see the heart fully formed before it morphs back. And there's no specific frame number. I always recommend just adjusting the frame length and playing back to see what looks best for you and the project you're working on. Okay, so now with the text in place, I'll go back to the flipbook mode. And just like with the first part of the animation, I will add a brand new empty frame that's in between the current keyframe and the last one, which is my text. For the first in-between frame, I'm just going to draw a blob around the text, but I'll make sure that this new shape stays within the heart shape. And I've given some spacing between my new outline and the text, as I want to show the heart is gradually morphing into the text. Lastly, I'll color drop to fill in the shape. Next, I'll add a new frame, and this time I'm redrawing the letters merged together as I want to show in the animation that the blob is starting to form the letters. And just like with the motion trail, I'm going to create some small blobs and drops around and in between the main text blob. Once done, I'll add a new frame, and this time I'm going to redraw the text. And to help me better see the last frame, I'm going to adjust my onion skin settings. And that's definitely a lot better. And I'm going to go back now and continue drawing the rest of my text. And now that I can see that final frame better, I'm actually going to quickly tap on the previous frame and touch up these areas to align the previous blob closer to the positioning of that final text. And now that I'm satisfied, I'll return to the current frame that I was working on and finish drawing these letters. And now I'm going to add some small blobs and some of those like uncovered areas of the onion skin. And then I'll fill in the remaining letters. Next, I'll tap on the final last frame and I'm just going to add some tiny dots around the text. Now I'll exit the flipbook mode and play back my animation to review how everything looks. And I noticed that the text is going super quickly since I didn't extend that first text frame, which is a great example of why it's helpful to play back the animation to make sure you don't like forget any steps. So I'll pause the animation and go to that first frame and I'm just gonna zoom in on the timeline and then drag the edge of that first frame to the right to extend the frame so the animation holds for the same amount of time on the text frame as that heart shape. And then that's it. We now have this fun morphing animation that makes a great Valentine animation. To recap, I just walked you through my process for creating a morphing animation, as well as showing you how to plan out and create a fun liquid motion trail. These techniques can be applied to so many different projects. I hope you will have fun playing around with them. And I want to give a big thanks for watching. Let me know if you enjoyed this tutorial and if there are any other tutorials you'd like to see in the comment section below. Bye for now.